Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Art Lab at Home. My name is Katie. We are going to do some of the fun arts and crafts and science experiments that we would normally be doing at the library while we're all at home. Um, today is pretty special for me. This is one of my favorite programs. I get to do it every year um, and I always make a really big deal about it. It's going to be a little bit hard down because we're at home um, and also because this is really something that's better done outside. Um, unfortunately, when I look out my window, I can see that it's starting to drizzle. Um, but I already had this planned, so we're going to try it inside anyway. We are making bubbles today. Now, I don't know about you, but I love bubbles. I think they're so much fun. Um, so today, I'm going to share my very favorite bubble recipe with you. I'm going to share how to make my very favorite bubble wand with you. And then we're going to do a science experiment um, that's not really for repeating at home. It's more of a demonstration of, ooh, look how cool is that, um, with some pretty cool bubble stuff. So to get started, we are gonna make some bubble solution. This is mine. I have already made it, as you can see, stirred it up with my spoon. Um, and for you guys to make some at home, you are gonna need some Dawn dish soap. Um, I know that this seems like kind of silly, but it's pretty important to use Dawn original recipe soap. Um, it gives you the strongest bubbles by far and the best. They did not pay me to say any of this. This is just from using lots of different type of soap to make bubbles over the year. You wanna get Dawn if you can. Um, you are gonna need some water. I have some in my Princess Leia class. And the secret ingredient for these bubbles is a little bit silly. It is sugar. The, um, some bubble recipes we use corn syrup, some we use glycerin, which is part of what you use to make soap. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that we were doing something that a lot of people probably have at home. And sugar works just as well as those two for like the sticky, sweet, sticky part of the bubbles that you want. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your bowl and you're gonna mix your three ingredients together. One, two, three, in uh, this order. So you want one cup of water, half a cup of sugar, and a quarter cup of dish soap. Um, and that recipe can be scaled up or down depending on how much bubble solution you need. It's always one, one half, one quarter. Um, so you could do two cups of water, one cup of sugar, half a cup of soap, all the way up, or shrink, 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 all the way down to just a tiny bit of bubble solution. But nobody wants just a tiny bit of bubble solution. Um, I am, so what you do is you mix them all together and then you mix, mix, mix until all the sugar dissolves. Uh, if your water is a little bit warm as you're putting it into your mixture, then the sugar will dissolve a little bit quicker. And now this seems like not necessary, but one of the biggest tricks and tips I can tell you about making your bubble solution is you always want to let it sit for at least an hour after you make it. Um, up to like 24 hours if you have the time. Bubble solution works better the more all the molecules or parts of it have had a chance to like gel together. I don't know the science behind that. It's just true. Okay, so you've got your bubble solution. Now we're gonna make my very favorite bubble wand. And for that, you want, reach over here, um, a milkshake, two milkshake straws. Milkshake straws are like regular straws that you would find at the grocery store. Why won't that look in the camera for me? Um, but as you can see, it's a little bit wider and a little bit more like harder plastic or not quite as like wibbly wobbly flimsy as a straw. You can still bend it pretty easy. It's just a little bit harder to bend. Um, normally you would want two milkshake straws. For this demonstration, because my bowl is a little bit smaller, I'm cutting one in half. So you need two pieces of a milkshake straw just like this. And you need a length of string or yarn. So what you do, I just dropped one of my straws. So what you do is you take your first straw and you take your string and you're gonna thread your string all the way through your first straw. And then you're gonna do the same with your second straw. You wanna go all the way through until you have two pieces of straw on one string. And then up at the top, you will just make a knot and knot together your string. So now you've got this. 
we're going to pull it so that the knot is hidden inside one of the strings. And now this is the best bubble wand that you will ever use. You use the straws as handles. You're going to dip it into your bubble solution, getting it all the way wet. The other thing about bubble solution, and it's just another truth, is that the more you use it, the better it works. So we're going to see if we can get it to work on our first try. And if you can see bubbles on camera very well. Maybe I didn't think this one super through. Okay, so you get it, you pull it so that you can see the bubble membrane, and then you just back up and make a huge bubble that I've got floating around my room right now. Let's see if we can get that in front of the camera. Eh. Okay, it's not getting in front of the camera super well, but I promise you it was a very impressive and very big bubble. If you are doing this, you probably also want a towel to dry your hands on. I don't see one around here, so I'm gonna grab some extra fabric. Okay, so we've got bubble solution. We've got a bubble wand. I promise you to work, they work together. Um, but for our last thing today, we are gonna do a quick experiment where I show you exactly how cool this bubble solution is. Um, so what we are doing, I'm taking a bowl. It's a plastic bowl. The important thing about this plastic bowl is that it has a smooth rim. There's no like bumps or ridges on it. Um, and again, this is more of a demonstration than something to try at home. The main reason for that is that we're using something called dry ice, which is pretty dangerous, especially if you touch it. Um, and basically you don't wanna to touch it with your bare hands. I am going to be using gloves. Got my work gloves here. And I'm only going to touch the dry ice when I have a glove on, okay? I've got some dry ice in a container down here. I'm going to pick up a piece and hold it in front of the camera. So this is something called dry ice. Um, do you guys see the like smoke coming off? It's even getting a little bit cold through my glove. So we'll put it down for now. Um, that is dry ice. Dry ice is made up of frozen carbon dioxide. So normally when you make ice, you take a liquid water and you freeze it until it's a solid and then you have ice. Dry ice is kind of like that, except you take a gas, CO2, carbon dioxide, and you freeze it until you have a solid. And that is dry ice. And the smoke that you see coming off of it is actually the ice melting, and that's the gas that's coming off, that CO2 going back to its gaseous state. Um, and the thing that's so dangerous about it, have you ever like licked a really cold popsicle or an ice cube and gotten your tongue stuck and it like kind of hurt to get off? That's the feeling that you'll get only like times a hundred if you hold on to this with your bare hands. You can like touch it really quick. I wouldn't recommend it, you could. Um, but any like prolonged contact with your skin and dry ice is going to burn you. It's so cold that it burns like firewood. Um, and so what we're gonna do, I'm putting some dry ice in my bowl. I'm gonna put a little bit more in just so that we can get like a really good effect from it. And then, I um, am going to pour some water in to help it melt faster. Let's see if you can see this. You see all the like gash. So when we pour this in, it's gonna help it melt a little faster. Can you see all my smoke bubbling and troubling? This is a really good uh, thing to do around Halloween because it looks so cool. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use my string that I used to make the bubble wand, just because I don't have any else out here right now. And then I am gonna take my fingers and put them in the bubble solution, get them good and bubbly. And I'm gonna put bubble solution all around the rim of this bowl. So we're getting some real, real bubbly rim. Now I'm gonna take my string, as you can see right here, and I'm gonna dip it in and also get it really bubbly. And then very carefully, I'm gonna see if I can put a bubble membrane over the top of this bowl. And then we're gonna see what happens. So right now there's a bubble membrane on top of this bowl holding in all the dry ice smoke. I wanna see the best way for you guys to see this. It's kind of hard to see from the angle that the camera's at, but can you see 
the dry ice gas or smoke lifting that bubble membrane and making it more like a bubble. Let me see what happens if I move the camera down a little bit so that it's more eye level with the membrane. How does that look? Ooh, okay. You can see it right now. Also my very messy sewing room behind it. So we're gonna see how long it takes for our bubble to pop. Let me see how big we can grow it. And this is just an example of how good that bubble solution is because it is holding pretty strong after what must have been at least 30 or 45 seconds. Let it grow and grow. I'm standing far away so that the um, movement of the, of, the, of the air from my voice doesn't like pop with it. But we'll see how big we can get. I wonder if it's going to be, become, oh, there it goes. Okay, and there is our dry ice smoke experiment with our bubble mixture. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy today. Remember, dry ice is not to be played with by yourself. Um, if one of your adults wants to help you use it, that is something that they get to decide. Um, but the bubble solution and the bubble wand that I just showed you are both really great, really fun things to do when you're bored and it's a nice day outside, which it is not today. Um, I hope that you guys had a fun time and I will see you back here next week for Art Lab at Home.